Greetings, great learners. My name is Mr. Simbi, and welcome to today's accounting class. Today's class is an exciting one. I have an activity that I want us to do together. Make sure you have a pen, you have a pencil, and you have somewhere to write. You also need a calculator. Let us look at the practice question that I have for us today. It reads, extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance on 20th February, rent income, and we are not given the amount. However, we are given an adjustment and it reads, part of the building has been let for the past eight months. That means we have a tenant who is using part of our building and they've been using it for the past eight months. And they are paying us 1,490 per month. The rent for the last month before the year end has not been received, all right? So they have been in the building for eight months. However, we have a challenge that the rent for the last month, in other words, for one month, that is the last month before the year end, has not yet been received. That means they have paid us for eight minus one, that gives you seven months. They have paid us rent for seven months. That simply means I can get this amount that is on the question mark there. How do I get it? I'll say rent for seven months multiplied by 1,490. That should give me 10,430. This is the rent that we have already received for the seven months. But remember, our tenant has been in the building for eight months. For eight months, the tenant has been in the building. However, the tenant has only paid us for seven months. That means the tenant now owes us rent for one month. And whenever income has not been paid to us, we then call it accrued income. So there is accrued income in this case, and the accrued income is for one month, that is 1,490. How will I record it in the general journal? You have to remember that this is accrued income, and accrued income is considered an asset by the business. It is our money so we consider it an asset, we must still receive it. So I'll come here, then I'll debit accrued income. I'll debit accrued income. And my accrued income is for one month, that is 1,490. And then I need to have an account to credit. You have to remember now that rent, this is rent income, so it is an income account. So Income increases on the credit side. So I'll come here, then I'll credit rent income. I'll credit rent income. I'll come and say rent income, and it is 1,490. Very important that when you do this, here is where I neatly typed it. We debit accrued income, and then we credit rent income. After you have completed your general journal, it becomes easy now to do your general ledger. And remember, rent income falls under your nominal accounts section. All right? So I will have total here. I now need the rent that is for the first seven months. How much was that rent for the first seven months? You remember what I said when I said 1490 Multiply by the seven months, and we got 10,430. That becomes my total brought forward here. 10,430. This is my total, what we have received already. But we are still being owed by this tenant. Remember, we have done it already. Income that is being owed. Therefore, how much is that income that is being owed? 1,490. So in my rent income account, which is an income account, it increases on the credit side. I'll therefore bring the accrued income, which is 1,490. And then I'll now say 
the amount that I have not yet received, it is accrued income. So I'll come to my accrued income account and I will debit it with 1,490. But remember that uh, when you have done this, your rent income account must be closed off to profit and loss. And in profit and loss, I am bringing now the total of the rent income account, the total here. And I want you to quickly grab your calculator. And in your calculator, I want you to punch. In your calculator, punch in 10,430. 10,430, I'm talking about this one. Then add 1,490. You add these two amounts. How much do you see on your calculator? You find 11,920. That is the amount that you then close off your rent income account to the profit and loss with. So it comes here as 11,920. So when I come now to my profit and loss, I will say rent income, it becomes 11,920. This is rent for the eight months that the tenant has been in our building. Very important that your rent income account is then closed off to the profit and loss account on the credit side. When completing your accounting equation, it is very important that you rely on what you would have done in the general journal. Remember in the general journal, we debited our accrued income and we credited our rent income. When you come here now, you're simply saying again, which account did we debit? We debited our accrued income. We debited our accrued income. Remember, this is accrued. This is income that we're still to receive. That makes it an asset to the business. So I'll come to my assets and I'll say plus 1,490. And we credited rent income. And rent income, remember, income increases on the credit side. So I'll come here, then I'll say rent income. That means we're increasing our income. And income affects owner's equity. And once income is increasing, our owner's equity is increasing. So I'll come and say plus 1,490. And it will have no effect on the liabilities. Let us continue. We have another activity again, and it says, extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance on 28 February. Telephone in the trial balance, 11,400. Now, this is now an expense, and it reads, on the adjustment, the telephone account for the past two months has not been paid. Telephone cost per month is 1,140. So if telephone cost per month is 1,140, and we're told for the past two months we have not yet paid, it means I'll take my 1,140, multiplied by the two months. That means I'm owing telephone for 2,280. That is what I'm owing for the two months. This now is an expense. That means we have an accrued expense. Which account then do we debit? We debit our expense, which is telephone. We debit our expense, which is telephone, and we debit it with 2,280. And we credit accrued expense. We credit accrued expense. That means now we have a liability in our hands, 2,280. We owe for telephone. And when you come here, there it is. You debit telephone and you credit accrued expense. When you are completed with your general journal, it should make it easy now for you to complete your general ledger. And the first account in my general ledger is telephone. Remember, telephone is an expense. It will increase on the debit side. So I will have my total brought forward, which is the amount that was in the trial balance. And that was 11,400. And remember, in my general journal, I debited telephone with 2,280. So I'll come in, then I'll say accrued expense, 2,280. And then I should close this off to profit and loss. 
but I need to add these two amounts. And when I add them, they give me 13,680. 13,680. So I'll come here, then I'll say 13,680. But before we go to the profit and loss account, let us look at our crude expense. The accrued expense, I'm going to credit it now with telephone. And remember, it is 2,280. So I'll come here and say 2,280. And then lastly, we'll do the profit and loss. Remember, in the profit and loss, this is an expense. Telephone is an expense, so I'll bring it to the debit side of the profit and loss. And I'll bring the full amount, which is 13,680. There it is. It is very important that you remember this, that in your telephone account, you close it off to profit and loss on the credit side. Then when you come to your profit and loss, you debit it with the same amount, which is 13,680. Let us now do the accounting equation. On the accounting equation, again, it becomes easy when you've completed your general journal. Which account did we debit? We're going to debit our telephone. So we come here, we say telephone. And remember, this is an expense. So we're coming now to our owner's equity, and we're decreasing it by 2,280 minus 2,280. And we credit our account with accrued expense. So we come here, we say accrued expense. And then remember, once an expense is accrued, it becomes a liability. That means our liabilities are increasing, plus 2,280. This has no effect on my assets. Dear Linus, let us go for an ad break, and I'll see you shortly.